Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another One Man Review. Today I've got a book that I'm really excited about. This is an author, a mangaka, that I've been waiting to own his work in physical translated editions for years and years and years now. This is his newest project, hashtag DRCL, the Midnight Children, I think hashtag Dracula basically. This is the new book by Shinichi Sakamoto. He also has a book coming out in a month called The Innocent from Dark Horse. And hopefully with the publication of Hashtag Dracula and with Innocent coming out, that means that we'll eventually be getting a translation of what I consider his real masterwork, which is The Climber. He has continued to improve as an artist since then, but there's something about the writing of that book that I think just gets to the core of an artist shooting to be a master. Uh, it's like a, a, an analogy for that. And uh, that book is probably in my top three comics of all time, so I've wanted to own a physical copy of it. But I continue to be a fan of everything that Shinichi Sakamoto does, and so I'm really excited to get my hands on hashtag DRCL, and really excited to be getting my hands on Innocent next month, so you can be looking forward to a review of that as well. This is Shinichi Sakamoto doing his version of Bram Stoker's Dracula, and since this is new, I don't want to give away too much. I don't want to show too much of the art, but I do want to cover uh, what this book is about, how it's a twist on Dracula, and kind of give you an insight into what I love about Shinichi's work, um, what I think is so awesome. So the, the first thing that you'll see is that he's just got insanely detailed artwork uh, that develops over the course of the climber. It starts out the, the climber fairly normal manga style, but by the end of the book, it's kind of this insanely detailed artwork. Uh, he's working just himself in a studio of two assistants as well, so they're really putting in work. Then he's just also got the wildest imagination and goes to any length to bring those things to life, his visions to life. So here you can see that this is the ship that's bringing basically Dracula to England. And in this, Dracula is treated more like an infestation or a plague. I would say that this book really seems to be Shinichi's response to COVID, treating vampirism as a, a plague thing, dealing with the plague as a whore. So here you see these like insanely detailed mossy plant creatures that are latched onto this guy's back as like a parasitic thing. And that gives you kind of a sense of like the type of imagery that he can come up with. Uh, here you get another scene where these plants, these roots that have these blood vines coming out of them are attack, attacking these characters. And he's really never taking a shortcut anywhere in his work. It's just always in, intense like labor, intense, beautiful imagery all the way through. So in this, you basically get this transport ship coming in with this cargo and they accidentally bring Dracula. Then you get uh, where this takes place is at a private school for youth, for rich youth. And here we get the, the kind of four main characters besides Mina. So you have Arthur, who's very wealthy. He's going to become a lord in the house. You have Luke slash Lucy, who is a, a male who has a female alternate. So it's kind of a stand in for a trans character, I believe, is what that is. You have Joe, who's an Asian student that's obsessed with photography. Arthur's obsessed with recording. And then you have Quincy, who's come over from America, and he's, like, his father's a wealthy oil baron and, like, the only wealthy black man in America, the only free wealthy black man in America. So what you have represented in the characters is, like, a diverse set of characters. But I think what's going on here is Shinichi's trying to create a horror that's bigger than all of our divisions. I think that's one of the core themes of the book. And that, you know, to overcome this kind of existential level threat, we have to get past all of these kind of problems that people will put up, barriers that people will put up between race and sexuality and gender and all of those things. So that's like a sub-theme running through the book um, against the COVID theme. And then, of course, you're going to have... Mina. Mina is the kind of feminist character in the book. She's really 
super tough is into catch wrestling and will take on very large men. So it's a very different Dracula. You have all these kids in this school. You also have Reinfeld being a kid in the school that Arthur's looking after for some reason. I don't know the explanation on that yet. But here you can see a sense of like how good Shinichi is with figure work, how good the expressions are. Uh, I can't even express to you how fine the details are that just wouldn't be able to show over the video. But he does a really interesting technique where he'll draw like the thinnest, thinnest hatching lines as thin as he can get them. And then he'll actually go back over it the other way with white to break the line up to almost make like a stippled effect. And it, it creates almost like a pencil drawing look throughout his work, even though it's all pretty much black and white. These days he works on the computer. I know in uh, The Climber he was working purely analog, and I think in Innocent you get a transition to the computer. I'm not sure if it's right out the gate. But really taking the manga stylization and bringing a lot of extra realism to it, you know, having the eyes and the noses and stuff, the figures stretched out, but an extra sense of of realism to everything it's just absolutely some of the best art i've ever seen uh, something that was really inspiring me when i was working on strange death because of just how fine his lines are and how he uses them and eyes and stuff was something i was picking up on and using you get just really insane backgrounds he's obviously using adjusted photos things like that for some of the details but they do it in such a way that it integrates in. It doesn't just look like characters plopped on top of photos. They do enough drawing over it. And then, you know, the tiniest details going back with all the figures. And also, there's just like a really beautiful Victorian kind of imagery throughout. He's also very playful with comics as a form in a way that I'm not used to seeing so much in manga. Like, there's this scene here where Dracula is speaking and it's actually like text running across the image like in the shadows so it's speaking from the shadows there's really cool things like that and then again you can just see like I know John's been talking in some recent videos about hating when a page two page spread is eaten up with a face but I think artists like Shinichi really justify it because the impact of an image like this and again, you can see that some of that like broken hatching he does, the beautiful way he draws eyes and hair, and just it's all this really cool image images. The other thing that I really, really enjoy about Shinichi's work that started in the climber and is carried out in Innocent and uh, Innocent Rouge, which is the follow-up to Innocent, and then in hashtag DRCL, is that he's not afraid to go into these large kind of surreal sequences that are representing interior states of the characters or they're kind of metaphors for the story so here you have luke as lucy uh the lucy persona has come out telling mina i feel unusually like myself tonight there's something i want to do that you know i've not ever done at this point it's pretty obvious that uh lucy has been bit and is turning vampire herself as well and so you get this thing here which is uh, Lucy in the Luca clothes, in the more masculine clothes, and is opening up and having this girl inside locked in a cage. And then you get these beautiful, surreal fantasy sequences of the girl coming out of the cage, unlocking the cage, flying out, and then having the bat wings, and this almost like old school etching style drawing here with the more designy floral patterns all over, and then this beautiful two page spread of what's actually happening back in reality now that this character's like you know the way they feel about themselves has been released on the world and you see them dancing here and again you get a sense of all the amazing detail that he does the the way that the clothes are rendered and everything is awesome and then up here you can see that there's um, some lettering going on in the window I think it, it it's a little the only bad thing about this book is some of these big spreads are kind of glued together so you miss some of it but I I think it's saying die up in there it might say pi I can't really read that but uh, there you can see the lettering in there so there's like these hidden things in the images just real attention to detail and then the the surreal images throughout I think really add an extra weight to his work these kind of interior metaphors that he builds up throughout his work let him get entirely fanciful there's so many images i could have shown in this book of the the monsters and all these different things uh you know but i don't want to spoil too much of it and then just another look at the more surreal imaginative parts here you have um 
Reinfeld has made this little rat slash frog slash bird character that he's puppeteering and basically doing a play about how Dracula's coming and then you get here this body reforming itself where you have like the eyes and the heart and the skull and it's all coming together to make this big gnarly Count Dracula's body forming itself and you could just see the, the intensity and insanity of the images so it's like even though he's using some photo techniques and, and whatnot to get the in, insane detail that he wants to get in his images I'm sure there's computer generated rooms and things like that uh, it all comes together to always just be this wonderful vision of someone who you know could do it all by hand um, he's just on the time compression of the, the manga releases but I think someone who's just got this vision for what their work should be and an imagination in both the writing and in the art that's just, you know, I've, I've, I don't know that I've seen anything else like it. It's just one of those artists that just absolutely baffles me every time I see it. And then the writing it always matches as well. I think the climber still is the most down-to-earth one, so I, pr I prefer that the best. But um, this DRCL book is really really interesting in the thematics that it's picking up with dealing with covid and like living in a plague state that's definitely cholera as part of the book so plague is a part of it and then using that as the kind of common enemy that we need to overcome our differences for i think has a great message innocent has a really interesting kind of political message and a lot of great personal drama um, this one hasn't got into the personal drama so much yet but knowing his previous work i expect that's coming this first volume is just setting up the scenario so i could not recommend this book more i could not recommend shinichi sakamoto's work more and i promise you that that it's worth buying these books to incentivize getting the climber printed in english um, you will enjoy these books but I, I think if we never get a translation of The Climber in English, we're really missing out on one of the best comics that's ever been made, in my opinion. It's one of my favorite. I would put it in my top three of all time books that I've ever read. Um, so this is an artist that's worth enjoying, but also worth supporting to make sure that we get the, the full body of his mature work. Because it's, it's stunning, stunning stuff. So go out, order yourself a, hot, a copy of hashtag DRCL Midnight Children. And go out and pre-order yourself a copy of Innocent uh, from Dark Horse. I'll be doing a review of that as soon as I get it because I can't keep my hands off of his stuff. The Eisner nominated The Strange Death of Alex Raymond by Dave Sim and myself. This is a gorgeously illustrated and designed book. Dave doing most of the illustration. Um, amazing compositions throughout. What Dave is doing is he's recording his obsession with the death of master cartoonist Alex Raymond behind the the wheel of Stan Drake's car when they got into a car crash. The best description of the book that I've heard is that it's like understanding comics with pages like this uh, mixed with something like From Hell when you get into uh, the, the theories about, you know, what actually happened with the car crash. And then with Sean on production, it's just one of the most gorgeously printed books you could get a hold of. Make sure to like, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell.